and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjber and in today's episode I'm going to be chatting to you about how to make money as a music photographer. Most of the tips that I'm going to be giving you are aimed at those photographers who are already really comfortable shooting live music photos and who have a fairly decent collection of pictures already in their catalogue. The first tip that I want to give you is to expand your portfolio. It's very rare that you'll find a music photographer that makes their entire living just shooting live shows, unless of course they're on a massive worldwide tour with a band. But what you'll find is that music photographers, myself included, will make more money shooting music related photography. And what I mean by that is, say, promo images for a band. You're going to go shoot a live band, um, you've seen them, you've worked with them maybe a couple of times. Why not take them off the stage and then into the studio or out on location in the street or the beach or the park and do their promotional images? So when you've done this maybe three or four times and you've gotten some really decent promo images in your catalogue, on your Facebook, on your website, somewhere you can show them off, then you can start marketing yourself and approaching bands or managers or even labels and say I'm good at this, I know what I'm doing, I can do promo images for bands. Once you've got that you can start demanding a bit of money for it. So you'll have to develop your own skills as a photographer when you're going into a different area of photography. You have to really hone in your directorial skills You'll find that when a musician's on stage, they're super confident and they can rock it, but when they're off stage, they can get a little bit more nervous. But it's still music photography, it's still fun, and it is somewhere that you will be able to progress a lot more and hopefully make some more money doing it. Event photography is something that I find can really help you along financially. Now, when I'm hired to shoot a music festival by the official organizers of the event, I'll find that they don't just want live music shots, they want an entire package. Candid shots of the crowd enjoying themselves, social shots of you know people having a beer, branding, so they need to show their sponsors that their logos were everywhere. So with that in mind, you really should be marketing yourself as more of an event photographer who might specialize in music. In Ireland here, we have things like the St. Patrick's Day Festival. That will feature a lot of live bands. So what I tend to do is I contact the festival organizers way in advance, like six months before the festival, and I'll promote myself to them. I'll send them an email with my portfolio, and they'll come back to you and say, perfect, that's what we need. If you're having trouble getting onto the official team of photographers at your local music festival, then don't worry. There's still ways of getting into the music festival and shooting and getting paid. Now, you can go down as part of press and shoot for a magazine or a blog, but I find that you don't really earn an awful lot of money doing that. If you look around at any music festival, there's corporate sponsors. There's loads and loads of corporate sponsors. And what you'll find is that these corporate sponsors have the most money. These companies want their areas and their stages shot in the best possible way. What I'd suggest that you do Go and contact the PR company that's representing them. Do a really nice, polite email and include a portfolio of images. And you'll find that once that PR company knows you, likes your work, you might do that festival for them. That will trickle on throughout the rest of the year and you get loads of different events. Some music related, maybe some not. But that's really where the money is down at music festivals. Music photography is so popular and there are so many people out there who would love to better their music photography skills. So if you're really confident in knowing what you do and you're really good with the camera and you've got a great portfolio of images, then why not share that knowledge? Why not teach people how to do what you do? It can be a really nice way of learning back from your students, it can be a nice way of giving back to the community and it can also be a little bit of a money earner for you. One of the greatest tips I ever got when I was starting out was to go and cover everything. Don't have a night off. So if you're sitting at home and there's a battle of the bands happening in a little venue down the road from you, there could be 10 bands playing that night. So if you go down, spend a couple hours shooting every band that plays, and then here's the genius bit. After the gig, why not contact each of those bands with their set of images and say, hey, I was there, I shot your band. Do you want to buy these from me? And you could charge something ridiculously cheap, like 
50 quid or 40 quid or whatever. Worst case scenario, you don't come away with anything except a whole decent portfolio of new live images and a whole new fresh set of contacts for new bands. Best case scenario, every band gets back to you and you make 500 quid. If you've been shooting music photography for quite a while, you probably have a really decent portfolio of famous people, so lots of touring musicians. Why not open an online store? I don't personally do it because you need to be super organized and patient, which I'm not. But a lot of photographers do do it, and they find that it's a really instant way of making cash, particularly around holiday season. That's all I have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to better your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Center. If you want to watch more videos, then subscribe to the Adorama YouTube channel. And if you want to leave me some feedback, then please do so in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.